President Biden tells Iran, don't you dare attack the United States of America, then attacks people in Syria for attacking U.S. military troops. The Pentagon is sending 900 boots on the ground to the Middle East to strengthen U.S. military presence in the area. And Tucker Carlson says if the government doesn't start helping the American people more than Israel and Ukraine, there is going to be an uprising, the likes of which we've never seen before. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. I am back in my office and excited to give you the news, but you know what? I don't actually like this look. One second. Ah, uh, that's better. <laughs> I feel like my old self. Thanks, Mr. 1920 Soap, for making me look so good and also for sponsoring today's video. Just days after warning Iran not to attack American troops in Iraq and Syria, President Biden carried out multiple precision strikes on Syrian and munition and storage facilities. To be clear, these attacks were not in retaliation to Israel's war on Gaza, but simply responses to recent attacks on American troops outside of Israel. Pentagon Press Secretary Brig Brigadier General Pat Ryder stated, what we are seeing is the prospect for more significant escalation against U.S. forces and personnel across the region in the very near term, coming from Iranian proxy forces and ultimately from Iran. Now, despite this truth, the, country al the countries allied with Iran may mistakenly confuse America's actions with those tied to Israel, which means war could break out across the Middle East as a result. Now, the United States is going to continue to back Israel, which means as Arab nations continue to be irritated with Israel, they may take it out on U.S. military troops. In an effort to combat escalation for America's defensive attacks, the Biden administration is sending an additional 900 U.S. boots on the ground to the Middle East. Ryder, the Pentagon spokes spokesman, confirmed these newly deployed troops will not be going to Israel and are intended to support regional deterrence efforts and further bolster U.S. Pro uh, force protection capabilities. Ryder claimed attacks have persisted on American forces as recently as yesterday, but thankfully uh, claimed Iran's most recent attack has failed. Now, back over in Israel... Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has offered unfortunate details, claiming the ground offensive in Gaza will likely take a very long time. Gallant described that their main issue is that Hamas has built underground tunnels which are hard to detect and destroy. At one point, he claimed the tunnels often originate in civilian villages, making the problem even more complicated to solve. To make matters worse, members of the terrorist group have reportedly attempted to blend in with civilians and have used places such as hospitals, schools, daycare, and residential apartments as places to house weapons and launch uh, weapons from. In an effort to make Israel's job a bit easier in combating Hamas, the Biden administration just revealed plans to place new sanctions on individual people and companies in Iran, Sudan, and Turkey. Despite uh, this, Deputy Treasury Secretary Wally Adameo stated, we will not hesitate to take action to further degrade Hamas's ability to commit horrific terrorist attacks by relentlessly targeting its financial activities and streams of funding. Now, in terms of funding for Israel and Ukraine, the new Speaker of the House just spoke on this issue. Unexpectedly, Johnson claimed that he actually does support aid for Ukraine, but doesn't think other Republicans will pass one bill, so they must be combined. Johnson stated, we cannot allow Vladimir Putin to prevail in Ukraine because I don't believe it would stop there, and it would probably encourage and empower China to perhaps make a move on Taiwan. We have these concerns. Now, while Johnson does support funding to both countries, he also made it very clear that the White House should be providing the American taxpayer 
with count accountability for every single dollar spent. The man who took the lives of 22 people in a shooting uh, in Maryland has not been captured, uh, excuse me, in Maine. Uh, the suspect, 40-year-old Robert Card, reportedly abandoned his car near a boat launch near the uh, As Androscoggin River in Maine. Police are now searching the waterway and the area around it, but have not found him despite over 500 phone call tips coming into the police. I can't believe in the 21st century, we, we literally have people still attacking massive groups of people. And we also have satellites that can't just track somebody uh, and figure out where they are. In the New York Supreme Court, Judge Arthur Enigron uh, has just ruled that Ivanka Trump, the former president's daughter, must testify in her father's real estate fraud case. While Ivanka was a defendant at one point, an appeal court ruled that the statute of limitation blocked the state from going after her with her fathers and brothers. However, Enigron has said, I don't really care. I'm going to force her to testify against her father anyway. So he's basically going against the rule of law and the law in order to continue to pursue Donald Trump. In other news, former President Donald Trump made headlines after he delivered a passionate campaign speech in New Hampshire. In a clip that has since gone viral with millions of views, Donald Trump stated, Under a Trump administration, gasoline-powered engines will be allowed, but child sexual mutilation will be banned. It's just crazy to me that we live in a day and age where I have to say these things out loud, right? Of course, people want the option to buy a gas-powered car. And of course, we should be very careful affecting children for the rest of their lives based on thoughts they have while they still have a brain that's very much underdeveloped. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has just caused some controversy over claiming the current high yield curve being seen, such as the 10-year treasury, are being caused because the U.S. economy is resilient and not because of our large national deficit. Uh, Yellen stated, it's perfectly possible that we will see longer term yields come down, but nobody really knows for sure. But I see the higher yields as certainly, importantly, a reflection of a stronger economy. Now, how can someone in such a position be so disconnected from reality? It's literally her job to know what's going to happen based off of data. Our economy could end up crashing and burning because of out-of-control inflation, the amount of interest that we owe on $33 trillion, the amount of taxpayer money that is or isn't coming in to the U.S. Treasury through the IRS, this woman literally makes herself sound like she doesn't know what she's doing. Uh, and you know what? There's a great possibility that she doesn't. Remember, she was the Federal Reserve chairwoman during the Obama Great Recession. So they literally were like, hmm, who helped us get through the Great Recession? And it was proven that they did a terrible job. Oh yeah, Janet Yellen, let's make her the secretary of the entire treasury for the United States of America. All right, now speaking of inflation, Tucker Carlson just commented on the U.S. economy and the current disconnect between Washington, D.C. and the average American. Carlson warned that if rich politicians don't start actually helping Americans, then a very negative, abrupt change may take place in this country. He stated, abrupt change is coming, and that's very, very disconcerting. And so rather than reassure people that, you know, we kind of got your back a little bit, by the way, we're going to spend $100 billion on other people. Now, let me know in the comments down below. I know Americans are very generous, and we want to see peace around the world. We want to see actual functioning democracy but we try to force it on a lot of people. And now we have all these losing wars that they want to send hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars toward, but they're not helping the American people. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you feel 
like the American government is trying to help you with your business or with your family or with your safety net needs? Or would they rather help illegal immigrants and people in Ukraine that have nothing to do with the United States of America? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, ever since I started telling you guys what's really going on in Washington, D.C., I've had sponsors drop me. But you know who hasn't dropped me? Mr. 1920 Soap. The very best soap in America. This is an American-made soap uh, from a small American business delivered to amazing people like you. So if you're already a customer, go use the discount code AMAZING to save some money and reorder. But we've got Christmas coming up. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. Oh my gosh, you guys. These, these smell so good. And they are big chunky bars of soap that last for a very long time. Oh, this one smells like the cleanest thing you've ever smelt in your life. And this one smells like oatmeal with uh, butter and brown sugar in it. Oh, you guys, it's so, so good. Anyway, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will come on and share more with you. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. I really, really appreciate you supporting the channel being a member of the channel. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button right now. Give this video a like and then check out this video and also make sure to check out this video. Thanks so much and I will see you on the next video.